will you please stop touching that? What? And can you please move it away from me? Say hello! Right, go on, have a little guess if you can figure out what that sound is. I'll, I'll pause for a few moments, a little bit of silence, and let Beck do the shaking. What would you say that is? <laughs> go on, do you want to tell them? Um, it's my cat! It's Beck's dead cat. So, <laughs> as you tune in to Chasing 40, episode 3, we begin with... Last week we were talking about showbiz entrances and showbiz extravaganzas. <laughs> this week we begin with Beck shaking her dead cat at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to repeat <laughs> that. Just, I'm so wrong. But you are, you're shaking your dead cat at me. I am, yes. He's just wanted to say hello. I, I won't even repeat the conversation that we had leading into recording this week's episode. We were talking about the demise of our respective animals and the, the reason we got onto this was off the back of a photo that Beck sent me through the week and it ends with her shaking her dead pussy in front of me. <laughs> That sounds even worse, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, less of the innuendos. We don't want to go down that no. route. The reason that we, we started talking about this, Beck's cat, by the way, was called George, was last Saturday, I went out and had a few drinks and I sent you a picture of me with my current cat, which is called Lennon. Which he, who is alive. Yeah, who's scratching my face off. And Beck sent me back a picture, right, of her holding something. Now, your cat's name was George. Yes. And on the box that Beck's just been shaking of her dead cat, it's got the name George. Now on the picture that Be Beck sent me back, it was like a selfie and she was holding it up to her face. Now I, I knew Beck's cat was dead, but I never knew she'd had it cremated and she had it in a box in her living room. Even <laughs> though I've been to the, the flat several times, I've never ever noticed this box. So when I looked at it, you know what I thought that was? Because I could only see the, the G part at the start. Uh, and bear in mind, I've had a few drinks. Go on. I thought it was something to do with Google. <laughs> And what I thought it was, was you know the way you've got Amazon, I've got that, th by the way, we're not sponsored by Amazon, a few people have got in touch with me throughout the week saying, why do you keep talking about Amazon? We're not. But anyway, you know what, Amazon, I've got that thing at the moment where you, you it's, what's it called? It's like a sort of personal oh, assistant. yeah, Echo, the one that talks to you. Yeah, I think it's got a name though, hasn't it? And it, I thought that was the Google version of it. That's what you were showing me back. <laughs> so I'm going, why is she, and I, but again, I've had a few drinks, why is she sending me a picture of her Google machine? <laughs> So the next day I go to Beck, well, what's that Google thing you've got? She's like, no, that was me dead cat. <laughs> anyway, well, why, we, 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 we spent two minutes talking about a dead animal to start the show. This was not the way we planned this week's show. How are you? Welcome. It's Chasing 40, episode three. You know what? This week, I, I was not really going to go on too much about last week's episode about staying relevant. But you know the way I'm on this crusade at the moment to try and get myself down with the kids. So yes, done the thing stop again. doing the hand thing you know, again. You know what someone said? I need to ask your opinion. Okay. Someone said this to me through the week. Have I got a 90s haircut? 90s? 90s haircut. Can you just describe my haircut? Um, It's kind of slicked back with a side parting. It's not 90s. I think I look quite sort of of the day and age. It, it, yeah, it is. It's what people have. I, I mean, the sideburns are maybe a little. But... Sideburns are cool. And that grey bit. That's there is no grey bit. There is no grey bit. Now, honestly, is really where? Just there. Oh. It's all right. I've got some tweezers. I'll get rid of it for you. Thanks for ruining me, Dave. No, someone <laughs> said to me, I, I heard you talking on on the show last week. And you were going about staying relevant and all that. I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm trying to. I'm making an effort now. We're back in the media. And I need to sort of absorb the content that's out there and see what people are liking, see what people are digging. Mm -hmm. She said to me, "This is someone who's quite close to me." She said, "Well, you know, the first thing you want to do is sort out that '90s haircut." <laughs> <laughs> what '90s haircut? She went. Your hair. It's not. It's a nineties haircut. I'm going. It isn't a nineties haircut. Now, if you go back about a year or so, when I had long hair, I had the old Liam Gallagher thing on the go. Yeah, you could accuse me of the nineties haircut. But anyway, I'm glad we've got that sorted out. I, so I haven't got a nineties haircut. I don't think so. No, but you are going grey. So how's your week been then, Beck? Uh, it's it's not been a bad week. Nothing too uneventful um, has happened. I um, I should have got a fat club last Monday, as you know, but I didn't because I'd eaten too much pizza and drank too much wine. Yeah, actually, I, I wanted to bring this one up because mm. through the week, and if you've started following us, by the way, on social media, you'll notice through the week I've done absolutely nothing. I'll explain about that in a, in a few moments' time. Beck, though, as always, is posting a series of random uh, messages and images on her Instagram account. You posted a picture, th and I'm guessing you've spectacularly fallen off the old drink wagon through the week. <laughs> Because on a school night, you posted a picture, which at first I thought, oh, look back. I think, was it Thursday night? Yeah. Is having a good time with her mate. She's gone out and had a couple of drinks because it was a picture. It was like a selfie with her and a load of people. On closer inspection, though, 
They were all in fancy dress. So what, what the heck were you doing on Thursday night? You were, it looked like you were out with Captain Bird's eye. <laughs> By the way, if you want to check out this picture, you can go on Beck Sunflower. You can find that in it. Look in the description right now of the, the podcast and you'll find out all mm. the links to contact us. You'll be able to see it. But what the heck were you doing out with? Explain who else was there. Uh, well, I don't actually know who they are or what they were doing, to be perfectly honest. I accidentally ended up getting a little bit more merry than I was going to. And uh, we, we were walking from one place to another in town. And as we crossed over the road by the town hall, there was just these people running around, two of them yeah. dressed as chimneys from the Titanic, um, and the others dressed in various different kind of captain's outfits and stuff, <sighs> sure as was, you do. Sure, there was a Viking on there as well. Possibly. So they weren't your friends, they were just randoms that you bumped into. They were just randoms, yeah. Oh, so, well, a bit of an exciting week then for you. Um, myself, honestly, I have done absolutely nothing, and... By about Thursday night, well, especially Friday, I was starting to think, you know what, I need to go. I need to just go out now, neck a bottle of wine, and do something crazy. So I've got something great to talk what? about. But my week came to a shuddering halt thanks to a delivery that I received on Sunday. I've been waiting for this book uh, about George Harrison. It's like an autobiography mm. slash um, record of all his creative experiences, pictures, and all the lyrics of his songs called I Me Mine. Literally since Sunday back, all I have done is read that book. Really? I've not watched any TV, really. Seen a bit of the news, caught up on stuff to do with the Oscars, which we'll get onto a little bit later on. But other than that, I have just plonked myself down every evening and read about George Harrison. Wow. So if we want to do a whole podcast about George Harrison this week, <laughs> and I'll talk about how he you know, wrote some of his greatest songs and some great photos that I've seen and some of his inspirations, we'd be on to a winner. But I, I take it that you don't really want me to talk about George Harrison for 40 minutes. So mm. it's been one of them, them weeks for me. Hey, you know what? Catching up on last week's show, um, I need to correct you on something. Me? Yeah. What? Eagle Eye Cherry isn't dead. Is he not? A lot of people got in touch with us to tell us that Eagle Eye Cherry isn't dead. If you caught episode two last week, Beck was adamant that the legend that was the guy that you know sung Save Tonight uh, the masses in 1997 was no more he was perished he was like a cat he was in a box <laughs> just ashes yeah, not on a fireplace <laughs> but on someone else's fireplace but Eagle Eye Cherry is most definitely alive oh that's good news I've got an update on the actual whole Cherry family if you want Okay. Uh, Eagle Eye is now 47 Okay. did you know he was born in Sweden by the way there's a fact no, for you I thanks. didn't know that thanks. Nana Cherry is 52 she's alive ok that's good I was, I was right it was Don Cherry the Dead who died in 1995. So he's the only member of, and he was a famous jazz fella as well. So I got that one spot on. That's bad, you know, you diagnosed Eagle Eye Cherry as being deceased and no more. But it got me thinking back to many, many years ago. And I don't, I think we were working together when this happened. When I wrongly announced the death of a band from the 1990s on air. And not only, this is the thing, because with me and technology, I'm just, I don't need to go on Google. I know this, this I know this is fact. I don't need to fact check anything here. I continued for about 30 minutes until a barrage of calls and texts saying, no, no, you've got that one wrong, Jeff. They're very much alive. Yeah. Remember the band London Beat? Yes. I announced on air, right, one day that they died. No. I remember them, I've been thinking about you. <laughs> I bet you there'd be a surge and all people downloading that song. <laughs> yeah. I remember that one, London Beat. It was actually the London boys that were dead. You remember them ones, London yeah, Nights, don't yes. you? Oh, I've still got their vinyl. So in my drawers out there every single day on the show that we would do on the breakfast show when it got to nine o'clock we do i don't know if this was the time tunnel or what was that when we worked for hits, capital hits not no high school hits. high school hits there we go they were proper radio sound and <laughs> things then aren't they so uh, the breakfast show would finish at nine o'clock and then when we were on heart fm it was the hey everybody it's half of the time tunnel we're gonna go back in time <laughs> you gotta guess the year when we were on the capital one it was the the high school hits thing so i can't remember which one it was but one of the the, the years we were doing involved mm. it was a big it was a big hit for london beach <laughs> so i'm teasing it up i'm saying and this is what makes it worse like i begin it just before nine o'clock i say Right, and on the way we've got today's uh, time tunnel or whatever it's called, and um, we're going to be playing a song from this person. And also, it was a year that the band London Meat had a massive hit. Of course, sadly, they're no longer with us now. <laughs> we'll kick off with that next. So straight away, phone goes. You just said London Beat's dead there, you know, Jeff. I went, yeah, they are. You go, no, 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 they're not. They're definitely not dead. I'm sure they're still doing PAs in Swindon. No, no, they're dead. So uh, off the back of the news, we had to do this thing where we go up a little bit of a... I'm sounding all technical here, aren't I? We went up a ramp. So I'm saying, oh, so on the way we got this, it was a year that that happened, but we'll kick off with a band sadly no longer with us. Here we go, London Beat. More calls come in, text messages going, they're alive, they're alive. I think I was even going on air saying, a lot of people are calling up saying that they're, uh, they're still alive, but I just think they're in denial. <laughs> London Beat no. are very much dead. 
I think it was getting to a point where London Beat were actually going to turn up at the studio with the birth certificate, say, "Look, it's us, and we're alive." Look, can we get them out? You know, we're going to take we're going to take our podcast out on the road to the pub. I think we'll try and get London Beat to come and have a beer well, with us. I'm sure we could. It probably wouldn't cost much, maybe a tenner and a yeah. pie. But but yeah, I think it was round about the uh, the 25 to 10 mark when it was getting to the point where I had to announce the year where I had to admit on air. <laughs> By the way, a little bit earlier on, I uh, mentioned that the men London Beat were were dead. It was actually the London boys who died. <laughs> and I think I then as well went on to describe how they died. It was oh. in a car crash in Austria. It was pr- yeah, it was a pretty horrific death. So you're not well. the... What I wanted to say is, if you were feeling bad about wrongly diagnosing the death of Eagle Eye Cherry, don't feel bad, Beck. We all do it. We all we all wipe out 90s pop stars from time to time. It's the worst feeling, though, in the, in the world, you know, when you get things oh. wrong. And that's why I keep thinking, and I felt so sorry for Warren Beatty at the Oscars this week, because... Yeah, we're both from radio backgrounds and it happens you're not perfect you'll get fed some information sometimes where you'll read it out it's like the old Ron Burgundy thing isn't it that's yeah. so true there's so many people I know in the radio business still to this day they will read anything that's in front of yeah. them go fuck yourself San Diego <laughs> by the way it's ten past here's UB40 <laughs> tell me it, it happens did you, did you ever throughout your on air career oh, apart from last week <laughs> Diagnose yeah. the death of anyone, or you know, if you have any stories where you, you got it spectacularly wrong. I, not so much getting kind of facts wrong. I like to think I'm quite superior in in my knowledge. Um, oh come on! <laughs> and no, for me, it's uh, mis mispronunciations. I get words kind of mixed up and stuff. I I started off as a journalist reading the yeah. news, um, and there was a story about the cross channel ferry truckers who became the cross channel <laughs> Terry fuckers. Can you guess what happened next, kids? <laughs> The Cross Channel Terry Fuckers. <laughs> yes. They're the worst, them, aren't they? They're terrible. Honestly, stay away from them. They're, they're the type of people Nigel Farage hates. <laughs> they were on strike anyway, so oh. there, were, there, were, there was no none of that going up, but yeah. It's horrible. And the thing is, is when you're listening to someone when he balls up on the radio, I'll, I'll give you a bit of an insight into this one now. You don't realise the torment they go through. For, when, it, when it gets uh, something, it could be where you get it wrong, like me with London Beat and London, London Boys mixing up who, who was dead and who was alive, or you trip up a little word, or as Beck said, you swear. I mean, I was quite lucky. I never once swore on it. Really? Oh, I've done it quite a few times. Oh, no, no. I was very... I was always, And the thing... That people would always say that to me. I don't know how you don't swear on it, because you swear quite a lot in real Ooh. life. I'm like, great. <laughs> so a lot about my vocabulary, <laughs> that then, doesn't it? <laughs> Didn't think I swore that much. You know, there's something about that red light. When that red light comes on, it's like your grandma sat in the room next to you. Yeah. You're like, no, nope, can't say anything rude. No, for me, I was always spot on with that one. But the odd slip of the, the tongue or you say the odd word wrong. And it does, honestly. But next time you hear, I want you to have a, a real good thing. Next time you hear one of my brothers or Beck's sisters or our brothers and sisters, we'll, we'll, we'll bunch them in together. <laughs> one of our radio brothers and sisters, maybe stumble a word. Just think to yourself while you're laughing going, he fucked that up there, Sheila. <laughs> They're going through absolute torment because yeah. they will then spend guaranteed whatever song they're playing, they will spend the duration of it banging their head against the desk, running around the room screaming, Aah! and then they'll be so nervous and sort of pent up with how they get the next link out that they'll potentially cock it up again. Yeah. It is it's the worst fit. The amount of things that I, I couldn't list on a 40 minute podcast, the amount of things that I've broken in the studio. <laughs> But did you see the Oscars thing? I did. And do you know what? You're right. I felt sorry for Warren Beatty because he realised there was a mistake. You can see him like, looking at that yeah. envelope. And he's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But he's been getting loads of criticism this week. And I, I, I can see both sides of it, really. I, for him, as you say, he's going, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Mm. But didn't it say Best Actress on there? It said Emma Stone. And then for that, yeah. that film. Yeah. So surely at that point, he should have got... And he does, like, you can see where he's like, because he gets the other one to check yeah. as well, doesn't he? Surely he should have went, I, I, I don't know whether this is right. But he doesn't. It's just the typical, what we were saying there with the Ron Burgundy thing. And that's what a lot of people have been saying. Actors, they're just trained robots, aren't they? Yeah. Whatever's in front of them, they just read and they have to go with that one. So he just says, la la la. <sighs> but how embarrassing and how how bad must they have felt <laughs> did you people? see the pictures of the of the stars in the audience yeah on the front row <laughs> Matt Damon's like horrified well I think The Rock was one of them who's yeah. like what <laughs> what just happened well blimey that has got to be the, the cruelest thing that, that has ever happened and I, I was I know Jimmy Kimmel who was the Oscars host had laid into Donald Trump all the way throughout um, so I, I, I was sort of thinking to myself there's no way Donald's going to rise to this. Surely he's not that stupid and he will do the block capital thing ranting and raving about it. And the next day he didn't comment on it. He didn't pipe back to them and say, hey, you having a go at me, it's unfair. Mm. He said nothing. But you know the reason why he didn't say anything? Because you'd have thought to yourself, 
that's a, an ideal opportunity for someone to, to lay into to the actors yeah. so they're having to go to the politician so the politician can bite back and say well you can't even read the blooming <laughs> best picture thing can you but remember last year the same thing happened the exact same thing happened at Miss World a guy called Steve Harvey yes right he and I felt so sorry for that poor girl he says well done the winner is Miss Venezuela or whatever it was she comes and she's crying she gets the crown the pyro's going off the ticket a parade and then he goes I'm sorry there's been a really big error here it's actually Miss Yugoslavia and then she has to take the crown off and get off the stage yeah. Donald Trump produces Miss Weld it's no, his company really yeah so he, so he couldn't he had nothing <laughs> to say there even if he was angry and even if he wants to lay into them he couldn't because straight away it'd be well you're, you did it first oh man I didn't know that poor Oscars though mm. poor cast of La La Land but, um, but the only other thing when I read about the Oscars and when I see all these things uh, I, I have you seen La La Land is any every every movie that seems to win an Oscar I, I know nothing about them no I've not I've not been to the pictures for years um, I haven't seen La La Land and actually that Moonlight I thought it was that Bruce Willis thing from like the <laughs> 80s I was like what That's well, wasn't what? it a remake of that no it wasn't no there you go that shows exactly <laughs> yeah. what, what I know about the Oscars thinking back to Oscar moments so that's got to be my favourite Oscar moment since Phil Collins had his meltdown that was the beginning that was the beginning of the end for Phil Collins as a credible artist when he remember he started crying no when he won an Oscar do you remember that he won an Oscar Phil yeah, Collins Phil, Phil Collins Col- like the Phil, Phil Collins yeah Phil Collins Phil Two Hearts Collins Phil really Buster Collins he has won an Oscar for what he won it for I think it was his version of True Colours it was a, he, he did the soundtrack for a Disney movie didn't he oh, did he you don't know I'm saying I'm Disney so- is it <laughs> Beck's just looking at me blank. No, Phil I... Collins, the Phil Collins has won an Oscar. Yeah, he did a soundtrack wow. for a movie um, and he won that, but he started blubbering like a little baby. Aww. He was like, oh, this is the best night of my life. That's sweet. But Phil Collins, I, I was thinking about it in Through the Week because you see he's announced more because he's back on the road, isn't he? Yeah. With his, and his tour is called I'm Not Dead Yet. So we all know what happens <laughs> next, don't we? <laughs> it's like get Michael, him on that Jack- mural. Michael Jackson, this is it. Well, it was it, wasn't it? He didn't even get to the venue. <laughs> David Guest last year. That it wasn't his tour. That I'm not dead yet. After what happens, <laughs> what happens on Celebrity Big Brother? What happens next? He dies. Oh. So I fear for Phil Collins at the moment. But yeah, I was looking through the week at. Um, he'd announced some more gigs on the I'm Not Dead Yet tour. Um, one of the concerts was at the Echo Arena in Liverpool, and I thought, well, that's that's not far from, from me. I wouldn't mind going to see Phil. Wow! Don't start this. <laughs> What's wrong with Phil Collins? <laughs> Nothing. Great, great Crying at the Oscars, yeah, you can laugh at him. But as a musician, really, Genesis, they were all right, yeah. Okay. Phil, he had some. He, okay, I'm, I'm back. Phil yeah. Collins was the Justin Bieber of the eighties. <laughs> get, get lost. No, he was. He was. Not. He was the Justin Bieber of the eighties. I'll explain <laughs> why. Right, facts are okay. Justin Bieber, this day and age, sells millions and millions of records, doesn't he? In fact, actually, I'll go as far to say Phil Collins is even better and was even bigger if you compare the two of them. So, Justin Bieber, right, sells loads of records yeah. and stuff. Everyone loves them, sell out tours. He's had his own movie. I think it was like a sort of documentary following him around, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to think of anything else Justin Bieber's done. He's appeared in some TV shows as well. He's mm-hmm. made a guest appearances himself. I think he was in like NCIS. Beverly Hills or Los Angeles or whatever I think there's an NCIS blowing everything isn't there one of them shows anyway um, so yeah he's done all that he, he's done the pop thing he's done the movie thing he's done the TV thing right, right. That's, that's this day and age people love him yes let's flip back to the 80s here we go it's 1985 <laughs> you're feeling comfortable now back in the 80s I'd aren't say, you I'm, I'm feeling comfortable with this voice <laughs> by the way I think I might adopt a new persona for next week <laughs> hi everybody it's Chase and Forty it's uh, Jeff here talking about the 80s <laughs> Right, go back to the 80s, mm. Phil Collins in Genesis, Genesis mega band, selling out the world, big in America, would you yeah. agree? Yes. Right, Phil Collins is a solo artist, yes. big in America, selling out the world, you know, in the UK he was a big, big pop star, so big, right, that when Live Aid was on, which I think we'll all agree was probably the biggest concert of all time, they, ha- they only had one person perform both legs, he did London, and then he got on a Concorde and flew over and played in the States... Played with Led, Ze- even played drums with Led Zeppelin. By the way, that's a bit of a black mark on Phil's career because that was that bad that Led Zeppelin to this day will not allow that footage to be broadcast <laughs> on any Live Aid thing. <laughs> but anyway, that, taking that away, he so he performed at Two Legs of Live okay. Aid. He had his own film, Buster, right? Feature film, yeah, with him as the main star. So it wasn't him following him around on tour. He had all that. That was nothing to Phil. <laughs> and the big show at the time. I was talking about Bieber then with the NCIS things and all that crap. 
Phil was on Miami Vice. Not just his music playing, Phil Collins was Phil Collins. <laughs> Played himself on Miami Vice with Don Johnson. Don Johnson had no socks on, white suit, he was cool. That made Phil Collins cool. Oh, wow. So there you go. That is my reason why I say Phil Collins is just mm. as big. He, he was the Justin Bieber of the 80s. I don't know. Admittedly, he probably didn't have the teenage Arthur appeal. No. I can't argue with that one, little I bald Phil. Don't but, think P. Diddy also bought him a Lamborghini for his 17th birthday. No, but I think Mike Rutherford might have bought him a Robin Reliance or maybe a Mini Metro <laughs> as a thank you. And as a, as a, as a please don't leave Genesis. Yeah. We're screwed if you go. We got over the Gabriel one all right, but if you're gone, oh my God, we're finished. <laughs> But well, oh, it's, it's further proof, right? That oh. Phil is still a le- Phil is still a legend. I, and before you ask, I didn't get a ticket. I was unsuccessful. They all sold out, right? And I, I, I've written it down in my notes, but I thought you're not going to believe me on this one, so I'm going to show it to you. I can't believe the amount of work you've actually put into this. Oh, this was all Thursday night when I was panicking about me boring week. Um, <laughs> there we go. I need to make myself look at rock and roll. Right? Do you want to just read that there? That story, and this is from this is from the press through the okay. week. Tickets for the forthcoming Phil Collins concert at Liverpool's Echo Arena have appeared on an unofficial ticket reselling website at sky high prices. Concert tickets reselling uh, has this week been advertising tickets for sale with an asking price of of up to eight thousand nine hundred and ninety nine pounds. Do you Phil Collins? Do you see Justin Bieber tickets going for eight thousand nine hundred ninety nine pounds? And by the way, Beck undersold that there I because did. the the exact total <laughs> for the tickets on this website were eight thousand nine hundred ninety nine pounds. And ten pence. Uh, what? If only, if only that was eight thousand nine hundred and ninety nine pounds and nine pence, I'd have bought you that ticket. The Justin Bieber of the eighties is back. He's not dead yet. <laughs> yet being the operative term. Yeah, you might well lose that nine grand. Yeah, but, but let's keep an eye on that situation because it could change sometime soon. <laughs> What were you just saying to me? You, you've killed Anita Roddick. Anita Roddick, founder of the Body Shop. Sorry about that. Um, Tony Hart. That was a bad one. I couldn't believe you did that. I know. I was, I was actually really upset about that. I'm sure there'll be more, but yeah. it's. Uh... The, the, by the way, she didn't actually go out. Beck didn't go out and kill these people herself. Uh, we've just been talking then about Phil Collins before the break. And I was saying about the tour is called I'm Not Dead Yet. And whenever someone uses that name you know what happens next it always ends always ends <laughs> badly and Beck said oh well it's like when, when I did that feature many many years ago uh, Ch- what was it called Childhood Heroes um, yeah it was me and well, Yomit as well Chris and um, we did a little feature on a Friday it was Childhood Heroes so we'd, we'd it was all kinds of the great and the good from our younger years that we did interview and yeah nine times out of ten they'd die before we even got around <laughs> to putting the interview out which was always good because you'd have the last interview the thing it would, it would be great for us to actually because from time to time what we will do is we'll look back and we'll play some classic interviews on episode one you, you can't believe I'm about to say this on episode one there was a clip of when I caught up with Jedward <laughs> take the word classic out of that one it was just an interview <laughs> but it would be great if we, we could play some of these things like yeah. the Tony Hart thing and <gasps> Timmy and Mallet Timmy Mallet well he's not dead yet his no. career still is <laughs> but the problem is is we can't because Beck didn't you say to me that when you got divorced you, you lost all your tapes I, I kind of left everything um, in, in the old house with the, the lovely ex um, and needless to say I'm sure he didn't keep them as mementos of our happy life together yeah but you did do it something bad to his dwarfs didn't you so. dwarfs yes good dwarfs gnomes gnomes <laughs> All right, dwarves, no, I don't know, same I mean, thing, aren't they? He always had strange tastes, so maybe he did have a house full of dwarves. So this is what happens, by the way. If anyone out there hasn't been divorced, Beck will now explain what, what you go through when you, you split up with someone. Not only do you start living apart and all that, um, they mess with your tapes of your career, and then you put, was it in compromising positions, you put all his, his I was yeah. going to say elves. Then. <laughs> What's up with you? I get confused. <laughs> I don't know where these gnomes came from. I just happened to be passing the old house. And it was all of a sudden, there was all these gnomes and stuff there. And I'm like, what? So it would be rude when you've had a couple of beers and you see gnomes not to 
have a little Norm Karma Sutra thing going on. So that's what you did. Yeah. But you know what? We shouldn't feel too bad, though, really, about me talking about Phil Collins because you've mentioned when you talk about them, they die, but it was me who brought up Phil Collins' as tour. Mm. So I reckon he'd be okay because when I tend to talk about people's careers in the music business, <laughs> it tends to go the opposite way. <laughs> Prime example being, I, I, this is one of those stories that I will never, ever live down. And you, you still to this day love it, don't you? And remind me of it. It makes me laugh so much. Anyone remember Mika? In fact, has Mika still got a career? He must have. The guy who's son Grace Kelly. Well, anyway, we were at an event. Um, they take us away work many, many times throughout the year, and they'd have this big bash where they get us all together. And as a big thank you, they they get a load of acts that were either current at the time, they were big names, or ones that we were going to be playing on the radio. We had some cool ones as well. Blue, Ordinary Boys, yeah. McFly. But then the other one, that year, it's the very same year we had was a guy called Mika. And the guy comes on stage who was one of our bosses at the time. I forget his name. And he says, right, we've got this guy who's going to perform now. He's going to be big in 2007. It's <laughs> going to be his year. And you want to embrace this now. So welcome on stage, Mika. Now, this is like last thing on a Friday night. We've, we've tra- it was all the way down to Bristol, wasn't it? So mm. I'm knackered, had a few beers. Free bar. So I'm, I'm sat there looking at this guy come on stage with this like colourful... He looked like something from Jason the Technical yeah. Plumbing Dreamcoat. All this big colourful piano gimmick on the go. And he sits down. He's really shy. He's like, thanks for inviting me here. and I'm going to play a song for you now. Now, I listen to 40 seconds of this song that he's doing. And I turn to... And Beck was one of the people there and say you know what, he needs to drop this scissor scissors shit or he's going nowhere. Plonk the, I remember the bottle, bottle of Peroni, plonk it down the table and go, see you in the morning, and I walk out. <laughs> that guy was Mika and the song he was singing was Grace Kelly. It went on to be the most played song of 2007. Yeah. I think he won a Brit Award for it and he basically became a megastar. So that's that's me. That's what I know. There's my predictions about talent. <laughs> what what were you telling me about before? There's there's been some a big showbiz split, hasn't there? Oh, this week? so well, we mentioned the Oscars before, and yeah. um, Katy Perry was there with Orlando Bloom, and they had photographs of them doing you know the, the usual showbiz poses and stuff. And then like two days later, news breaks that they've split up. You, we saw all the pictures last year of him. Uh, waterboarding completely naked that was what I was going to say the only thing I know <laughs> the only thing I know about them too is because uh, those pictures if I remember correctly <laughs> what, he looked like look at me I'm Tarzan King of the Jungle she just looked mortified by that <laughs> so I thought that would have been the point where they'd split up no um, they, they have split up we don't really know why however they've not done you know like what we used to do when we were at school and you finished yourself, I'm packing you in it's yeah. over I don't like you anymore my mate says you're a minger type thing that hasn't happened um, in a very American Hollywood style they are taking respectful, loving space oh, from each all. other. Isn't that that's lovely though? It's a nice way. A bit like you know Chris and Gwyneth when they split up and they did their conscious uncoupling. I'm gonna call BS on this one. To be totally <laughs> honest, what, what? What? Read that to me one more time. Taking respectful and loving space, which is exactly what he was doing that day on that surfboard when he had his wang <laughs> flopping around in front of her. <laughs> you know, thank God you're doing this podcast with me, Beck, because. You're filling me in on all these things that are relevant, you know, that are out there at the moment. Katy Perry, you know, obviously big, big pop star at the moment. Do you know my other notes I was looking from through the week? What what I noted down mm. this week. Go, go on. Did you know? Do you know this oh. week, by the way, is the uh, the anniversary of when Gary Kasparov got beat to chess by a computer. That's one of the things. God, you really have had the best week <laughs> ever, haven't you? This, Do you need this, to go out? This is my life. And also, I'd written down on my notes, Tom Selleck. And I think to myself, Tom Selleck, why have I written Tom Selleck down? Because obviously, again, it's not 1986 and Magnum PI is no longer on. But have you ever seen this thing? This is quite interesting, actually. Have you ever seen... Well, we're all aware of the term clickbait. You know what that is, don't you? No. You don't know what that is, right? <laughs> no. I'm I'm supposed to be the one going no. I don't What's, know. No. Clickbait. Where you have these stupid websites, right? Where right. You you get to the end of a story and it'll say check out it, it, fake news in a way. You know what right. they're saying? Oh, and then it links, and then you're like three hours of your day is gone in a big black hole. Yeah. So you get the you get to this at the bottom of your story and you see something. You go, oh my god, I didn't know that happened. I've got to check this out. And you go on. It's all sort of spam that flies up, and then the story of it's got no substance whatsoever. Yeah. A bit like the Daily Star. On a daily basis but Tom, I got caught out twice by Tom Selleck this week one right I don't know what he's done to, to people out there these internet guys but they seem to use him as the poster boy for all the BS really? stories yeah so the first one was celebrities you didn't know were dead what's the theme of this week this week's show by the way shouldn't have been anything to do with being wrong and getting things wrong it should have just been called dead celebrities <laughs> so the first one was celebrities you don't know who are dead yeah. and Tom Selleck's face is on there 
So I'm like, oh my God, no, not Tom Selleck. But he's not dead. No, he's not dead. And as I've stated before, and I'll explain on a future episode, because a few people have called me up on this from last week, when celebrities die, I know. (laughs) And I do. And I'll explain that to you. And in the future, you'll just have to keep listening. But I thought, no way. But I I, I wanted to double check just in case Tom was freshly dead. And I hadn't been notified by the relevant authorities. (laughs) So I click on there. And and of course, Tom isn't dead. So I'm like, oh. Thank God for that one. Magnum PI is not dead. I've been caught out by the old. You just say so you're still hanging on Magnum. To me, he'll always be Monica's fella. From he was friends. in Friends, wasn't he? Nah, I still like the Ferrari and the Tash <laughs> and the uh, the old the old chest hair on the go. Was he doing? Did he have the Ferrari and the chest hair on the go in Friends? Um, you saw a little bit of the chest hair, which was quite pleasing. But he got rid of the Tash. No, it's very, it, oh, he's, Tom, no, the powers are weakened. No, there was there was something about him. He's like a sorcerer without his wand, <laughs> without that Tash. That's uh, what a man, you know. That 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 that's the ultimate male there, isn't it? Tom Selleck. <laughs> Hang on, <now>. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I. Uh, yeah, Do you want me to just leave you for five minutes? Yeah, <laughs> Pull the blinds. I'm just about to get a picture of Tom Selleck up on my phone, by the way. Now, so <laughs> yeah, just give, is it waterproof? Give, give, give me some, give me some private time. Right. So anyway, later on in the week, I'm, I'm looking round. I'm reading a story, and then I see something else, and it was <laughs> celebrities you didn't know had a normal job. And I'm thinking, what? what's that? And I looked down at it said, you won't believe these celebrities who now have shunned showbiz and now have a normal job. And there was a picture of Tom Selleck. Cool. So I don't know what Tom Selleck's done in recent <laughs> years. Well, I don't know what Tom Selleck's done since 1986, <laughs> as we've established on here. So I'm thinking, blimey, start of the week, he's dead. Now he's got a normal job. He's working in Walmart or somewhere. I, I've got to check this one out. So I clicked on it. And this is a story I'm thinking, I can't believe I've been done by this twice in a week. Tom Selleck, who started his career by first appearing on The Dating Game, from there he went on to star in Magnum P.I., as we've discussed, Blue Bloods, Friends, Las Vegas, and other TV series. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, well, that's his biog. Yeah. What, what's the job he's doing? He currently lives on a 60-acre ranch where he has a 20-acre avocado farm. Oh, what? I'm like, that's not a normal job. <laughs> you just told me he's got a 60-acre ranch, which he loves spending time with. The ironic thing about it, though, is Tom dislikes avocados. <laughs> That's twice you clickbaits have got me. And by now as well, probably my computer's riddled with biases. So can you have some consideration for people like me who like Tom Selleck? Can you just use another celebrity? Although it's someone like David Hasselhoff, it'd probably be the same Tom's thing. That's going to say. On there. Watch out. If you see a picture of Tom Selleck uh, for anything, with any story linking it to him, unless it's official TomSelleck.com or whatever he's got. <laughs> Don't go anywhere near it. It's fake news. Fake news, I tell you. Right, well, remember, you can check out previous episodes of Chasing 40 on whatever platform you're listening to us on right now. You could be on YouTube, if you are. Do the old subscribe thing. Give us a like. And you could be on SoundCloud. Do the old subscribe thing or whatever you do on there. I don't think you can give... Actually, no, it's hearts, isn't it? Hearts, your heart on SoundCloud. That's why I like SoundCloud, because it's much sweeter. There you go. You can give us the heart on SoundCloud, (laughs) or you can go on iTunes and do the subscribe thing. Leave us a five-star rating. As we discussed, last week we don't want four three two or ones don't bother with that one just give us the five star Uh, and also if you look in the description feed as well of whatever you're listening to you can find out how to contact us you can check out the pictures we were talking about a little bit (laughs) earlier on of Beck and her sailor friends and the various things she gets up to throughout the week including I'll put the dead cat on don't don't oh you keep shaking her dead cat (laughs) makes a big noise though he's only a little cat so I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother following me or checking me out because I'm, I'm going to be reading that book for at least another three or four days. Look, have yourself a great week and we'll catch you back here. Same time, same place, Chasing 40 next week. <laughs>